Good afternoon and welcome to my latest little little webinar, um, Working From Home, A Health Check. I thought it was uh, really important to really just to stop and take a moment and just make sure we're all doing what we know we should be doing and to give people an opportunity to, to ask questions. Um, so I'm going to be doing a, a short webinar today and uh, I've got my colleague, Debbie. Are you there, Debbie? I am indeed who is going to be responsible for asking questions and probably actually joining in um, with answering them. So if you do have any questions uh, during this webinar or have any anyway, um, please put them in the question box on the right hand side of your screen and submit them and Debbie will try and collate them and ask me as many of them as she can and obviously say she'll be joining in as well. So. Um, I think one more thing to say is we will be recording this. So if any of you have any uh, problems with your signal or hearing it, we will be recording it and we will be sending out a copy of it to you um, at the end of, uh, well, as soon as, it's, as soon as it's able to be sent out to you. So without further ado, working from home, a, a quick health check. This is what I intend to cover. Um, today. Um, so looking not only at the physical, although obviously that's something I, I'm going to sort of do quite a lot on because um, it's the area I like, but also look a little bit more at the emotional and also the productive issues that we may be finding working from home when we haven't done it before. I'm also going to mention a few little rays of sunshine. I think that we, we, we need to all consider the, the things we've learned and the opportunities we're having during this time. And then we're going to have time for Q&A. That's what I intend to do today. So first of all, looking at the physical setup, most of you who have um, had dealings with Postripe before will have seen this sort of general setup. This is what we want to try and achieve, or as close to it as we can, to try and protect our physical bodies um, while we're working um, and enable us to work safely. And I'm going to just focus in on a few key points to try and help people. So focusing in very much on the chairs. Now, some of us are fortunate to have adjustable chairs at home because we've worked from home for some periods of time. However, many people don't have that luxury. And a lot of people who may be listening to the webinar today are going to be using dining room chairs like you see on the screen. Now, it's really important, if that is the case, that we make the best of it we can. So what do we need to achieve with a chair? Well, the chair should enable us to get our arms in the right position. So when we're working, our forearms should be level with the desk. Our hips should be level or above our knees, and that allows the pelvis to be in a good position. And we need to make sure there is some back support. Now, if we're using a dining room chair, there is a lot we can do with cushions and towels. If we put them on the seat, we can raise ourselves up to get the arm position right. If we're not feeling good back support, then maybe a pillow or a cushion or a rolled up towel in the small of your back can do wonders. And if once you've got to that right height, you find your feet aren't supported, then look for a book or a box or a ream of paper. It's amazing what we find around our homes to provide that support. And this will actually produce a good position. So strongly advise you to look at these key points if you're struggling with your chair setup. Looking at the screens, and this is really important, particularly if um, we're looking to preserve the, the position of the neck and the head. We need to make sure that our screens are positioned centrally, so again, we're not twisting or turning. Most of the time, our screen should be about arm's length, and that will allow us to see the screen happily without actually encouraging us to lean forwards. If you're using two screens, put the one you use most in front of you and the other one close to it and as best as a similar height as you can manage. As you'll see in my um, picture, the boxes can, can do wonders. You know, that Tupperware that's always falling out of the cupboard can be put to great use to, to raise laptops and things up. The top of the screen, we should aim to get about eye height. So when we're looking at the middle of the screen, our eyes are just looking down slightly. And we ideally should have it just slightly tipped. If you can't get it perfect, get it as, as 
close as you can. If you have bifocal or very focal lenses, you may need to adjust the height slightly from this to make sure that it suits you and, and, um, and your glasses. Just want to point out, if you are going to put your laptop on a box or something flammable, make sure there is a mat or a tray in between. Um, we don't want to, to have any heat issues. And if you are struggling with one screen, maybe you just need to speak to your manager if you're, if you're not managing to do your work effectively. There are lots of options available. I'm working with lots of clients. Um, there have been uh, screens sent out and things like that. So looking at actually where to, what you're going to do with your keyboard and your mouse, again, let's look at the position that it puts you in. If you don't have a separate keyboard and mouse, you're going to have to move more to be able to stay healthy and feel well. But ideally, find yourself a separate keyboard and mouse. A lot of us have them at home. You can get them quite cheaply, um, even through Amazon and places like that. Or maybe neighbours um, would be able to lend them to you, pop them on your doorstep, that sort of thing. So do try and access a separate keyboard and mouse if you can. And then place them so your arms are relaxed by your body. Make sure you can feel the chair so you're sitting back in your chair when you're using these items. And make sure your hands are in a, a, a neutral, relaxed postures. Now, if you look at the picture on the right hand side, I put a picture there of somebody whose screen is actually quite high relative to their arms. Now, if in that situation you can't raise yourself up because maybe the thickness of the desk or something, sometimes it's actually better to put the mouse on your on your knee or on your lap um, or possibly the keyboard if you're finding your, your shoulders are tense. Um, it's not ideal. But if you're struggling, maybe trying putting your mouse further down in a relaxed position can be beneficial. I find this if I work on a train, not that I'm doing any of that now, but I find the table puts my, my screen too high for my arms. Um, and so I use the mouse on my leg quite effectively. Now, Ideally, if we can get, move away from the workstation, this is great. This allows us to take a break, allows us to change our position and be more relaxed. Now, I'm hoping that you're going to find opportunities at home to work in different ways. So particularly using the telephone, could you walk around or, you know, look out of the window? Try not to hold the phone. Can you use a, a headset or, or maybe if you're lucky enough to have a, a more private area, put it on loudspeaker? perhaps go back to being old school and write some notes and then come back to the computer to write things up. Reading items, maybe take your laptop and use in a soft seat for a while, but then come back to your workstation when you need to actually input into the, into the screen. And let's not forget the importance of thinking, you know, it's one of the best things that us humans have is a, is a good brain. So let's sometimes move away, do some thinking, and then come back. I'm enjoying my garden. I'm very lucky to have a small garden um, and I'm enjoying going out and actually thinking over problems and then coming back and trying to address them. Now, if we get that basic set up right and we take plenty of breaks, I hope that people are going to cope without discomfort. But I am aware, particularly we've had a few questions in already, that people are struggling. So I thought I'd just do a few specific slides on um, discomfort. So if you have back discomfort, check you're not leaning forwards, often a common issue. I've got a picture here of a, of a young lady leaning forwards. It's a very common posture we see, particularly with laptops. If you can't feel your back against the chair, you're probably leaning forwards. So make that as a check. Make sure you're at suitable height. So your arms are in the right position. Again, if not, it will tend to let you make you lean forwards. Check your feet are supported. If not, as I say, pop a book or something underneath. And as I said, if you can't feel your back, you're probably leaning forwards. And if you are struggling with discomfort, increase the amount of time you move. Maybe, you know, move every 30 minutes if you're having discomfort. If you forget, maybe use a kitchen timer or a timer on your phone to remind you. It's easy when you're engrossed in work to let time tick away. By the time you're uncomfortable, you've probably left it too late. So try to routinely get more breaks in. 
there are some simple back exercises. Um, I've got some examples here. Most of us are sitting far more than we do normally, and we could be struggling. I have to say, I've been quite good about taking my exercise, but what I haven't been doing is my specific back exercises. And my back told me yesterday that was the case, and so I'm back on my, ex my specific back exercises, and I have to say, they are doing the trick. So some simple exercises here. Um, if you want further advice, I would strongly recommend you visit the Chartered Society of Physios, the CSP website, and they have some good examples of exercises and care for back and coming on to necks as well. So neck discomfort. If you're working off a coffee table, this is the posture you're going to get. And obviously this is going to cause a problem. You have a 10th of your body weight at the top of your um, of your body, that's going to put a lot of strain on your neck. So if you're struggling with your neck, check your position. Make sure again, you're not leaning forwards. Check the screen position isn't encouraging you to lean forwards. And if you're struggling with discomfort, move every 20 minutes and do some exercises to get your head back in the right position. Here are some examples of, of my, I think some of my favorite neck exercises, particularly the one top left, which I call the double chin exercise, where you're actually bringing your chin back towards you, repositioning your head. And again, if you go to the uh, Charter Society's website, um, you will find um, actually some videos of people doing these exercises if you want some, some help in actually um, being sure you're doing them correctly. Upper limb pain, um, you know, so wrist or, or lower part of your arms, often caused by poor positioning. Um, you can see in the uh, picture, obviously, this person is at the wrong height and you can see the pressure areas. So again, check your basic position, make sure that your, your arms are level. And again, it's very difficult if you don't have a separate, have a separate keyboard and mouse. Make sure you're not holding on to, to phones or portable equipment because that's put a, a lot of strain on your, your hands. And make sure you move frequently. The image down the bottom shows how mouse positioning can actually bring the arm away from the body. So have a little check and make sure that you're keeping your upper arms close to your body. And if not, is it because your mouse position is either out to the side or in front of you? Again, simple hand and forearm exercises like you see on the screen will help to undo some of that wear that you put wear and tension that you probably get by you know working poorly, that sort of thing. Again, there are some more exercises um, on the on the website. Moving away from the sort of muscles or, or, or particularly or the body, let's look at the eyes. I mean, some of you may be struggling with eye discomfort. Perhaps you're not working in, a, in an, uh, an area where the lighting is as good as your normal office. Um, if we're looking um, at anything for any length of time, our blink rate goes down. And so quite often people get dry, dry eyes. And if we don't take breaks, the eyes get tired and we land up with eye strain, which can lead to headaches. So it's really important we look after our eyes as well as our bodies. So what can we do? Check your screen positions. Try not to position yourself so you're facing or backing onto a window because that puts a lot of strain for the eyes to accommodate to different lighting levels. Don't have your screen too bright, have a check on that. And maybe increase the font size if you find yourself peering forwards to read what's on the screen. We need to look into the distance every 20 minutes and that will allow our eyes to relax. So look out of the window or just look to the other side of the room, that can make a big difference. Think about your screen settings to do with blue light, especially if you're working in the evenings. You now we need to look after our sleep as well. And if we're using um, devices that produce blue light, that can actually affect our sleep quality. So check your, your blue light settings. And when you do break away from your work, try not to go straight onto your phone because that again puts more pressure on your eyes. Do things perhaps where your eyes are more relaxed. Got a few other working messages that we need to talk about. Um, I've talked very much about physical health so far, but we need to also look at your mental health. Make sure that where you can, you work away from where you take your relaxation and your sleep. 
Um, if it's not possible to set up a work area away from this, maybe just at the end of your working day, tidy it away. So it's not always there sitting, um, sitting in your visual field. If possible, take breaks with others. If you're, if you're at home self-isolating with, 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 with people, make sure you take the opportunity to break with them. But if not, do some, use some video conferencing. Have a cup of tea with a, with a, with a friend and a chat. Try and establish a good work routine. Get dressed on work days. Try and you know, set your alarm and, and do something that you would normally do. Um, and make sure you schedule in breaks, just as you would in the office time. So try and make sure you have a work routine that you stick to and therefore your rest routine. Really important to keep connected. Speak to your colleagues. Use these remote systems. Ensure some social uh, catch-ups. I have to say, I am a bit of a technophobe, and, and my colleagues would definitely agree with that. But I'm finding this technology very easy to use, and I'm using it both uh, with my work colleagues, not only for work, but for social um, purposes. But actually, I've even got my 80-year-old parents using it too. And so I FaceTime um, uh, them. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. And I find it really reassuring um, and not as good as having a coffee with a friend in, in a normal environment, but I'm really finding it positive. It is a difficult time for us all, and we need to talk openly about our concerns and the opportunities to, um, to get advice. Other things we need to do, look at your productivity. You know, make sure that you know when you're supposed to be working, agree work times. Maybe you need to be flexible with those because of other people you have to support. Um, I'm not having to home educate children, um, but I really am impressed with those who are having to do that. And I think it's an incredible thing to do. But we need to schedule time to do that. And I think managers need to, to know when people are available and when they're not. When you need to work, though, you need to have the opportunity to get your head down and do that. So make sure that you communicate effectively with people when you've got something you need to do, when not to disturb you, and when you're available for a chat. Like many people, I think broadband and connectivity is taking a bit of a hit at the moment. And I have two other people in my household who are using the Wi-Fi. Um, and like at times like now, when I know that I'm going to be uh, needing a secure connection, I ask them to come off the Wi-Fi and then I advise them when they can go on it again. And that makes actually for a very positive thing. And we all share that and we all have times when we when we need to work. So um, that works very well. It's all about communication. And I couldn't really leave without talking a little bit about safety. You know, let's be careful not to overload our sockets. Uh, again, power is something that seems to be in short supply and plugs certainly in my house. Um, and trying to make sure the cables don't go across walkways um, was initially quite a challenge, but we've, we've managed it now. Um, and, you know, keep areas tidy, make sure we don't have any trip hazards. I've talked a lot about breaks and I really do feel we have incredible resilient bodies if we give them an opportunity. So it's really important not only for our physical muscles, but for our eyes and also for our mental health that we do take these breaks. Um, it's also an opportunity to remain hydrated. You know, we do need to make sure that we drink plenty throughout the day. And will also make sure we take more regular breaks, which I think is a very positive thing. And if you're somebody who struggles with plain water, say, try putting a bit of citrus or cucumber in it. It's, it's amazing what it can do. So maybe keep something on your desk um, and it really will help you feel um, on top of it. It looks like we're going to get some good weather. So particularly important as well to, to keep drinking during the good weather. And when I'm talking about breaks, it's, it's difficult to be prescriptive as to how often one should take breaks, because it really does depend on what we're doing and the positions we're in. But I thought I'd provide some sort of gentle advice here. If you have managed to achieve a good setup, so you're well supported, your arms in the right position, the screen's in the right position, you probably need to take a short break every 20 minutes to have a move in your seat and look into the distance. But you still need to get up every hour. 
if you've got a less good setup, so like this gentleman here, um, you probably need to break away every 15 minutes. And if you do, your body will um, will work, will be able to look after you, but you need to up your breaks. And if you're having to work on small devices, such as phones or small portable devices, you're going to have to make sure you swap your hands regularly and again, really move on a very frequent basis. Now, I thought I would just share a few, what I would call rays of sunshine on dark days. Um, there have been some, I don't really want to call them benefits, but there are some things that I have learned and I do feel a benefit from this enforced period. I have been fortunate enough that my daughter has come home from university. And so I've had her for four, five weeks and I'm gonna have her another few more. This is time that I have with her that I wouldn't have otherwise. And I think there's a lot of people who are um, staying at home with loved ones and having far more quality time than we've ever had before. Now, nobody would have wanted it under these circumstances, but let's make sure that we really embrace it and take our breaks. I'm enjoying the, the opportunity to actually have long conversations, to discuss things, Whereas normally I'm busy racing from one thing to another. So let's, if we have that opportunity, let's be grateful for it and let's use it because I hope that this situation will not be lasting for a, a lot longer. I've also been very pleased with the community response and I wave to people out of my window and I shout at them across the, the fence. So I think I think that's really good. And do you know what? I'm engaging with elements of my job that I've not engaged with for a long time. I'm using skills that I haven't used before um, and I'm able to listen to webinars um, and I'm, I'm really enjoying some of the wider focus of my work. So again, if that's something you're able to benefit from, then really grasp it. Um, as I say, we're not gonna have it for long, which, which I think is great. So I think we really need to, to, to be positive about that. And I think it gives us an opportunity to think about what work might be like in the future and to think, can we get some benefits out of this awful situation? Now, I know that we're not being given um, much guidance as to what is going to happen next, but I think we all need to think clearly what we are managing well at home, what we're not. And so I've just put a few questions here that I think we probably need to consider when we're told that perhaps life is going to open up a little bit more. You know, we've had to sort of work in different ways. How effective has that been? Do you know what, are there things we're doing now better than we've done before? Or are things really a challenge and we need to get back into offices? So have a think about, you know, that. If we're going to phase back into the office, some people are going to be easier to do it than others. You know, if you know your high risk and vulnerable, you know, make sure that your, your manager's aware because you're going to need to have an extra duty of care to make sure you're kept safe. And maybe you've got dependents or childcare issues. Thinking what you need to do going forwards in this, you know, phase of return will be very helpful. You know, are there tasks that are difficult? Anything that can be done both now, now or in the longer term to try and improve things. And what about you know, I think a lot of people are thinking, you know, this home working has worked for certain things. It might be beneficial to do it in the future. And I would again take the opportunity to reflect on if you could make changes, you know, what would that be? Would it be a couple of days at home? Would it be every day? Would it be flexible working? I think taking this time now, so people, when people are, ask you, you're able to provide a, a, a good comment. So I'm very positive and I think that we are going to see some some changes, some real positive changes in the future. So just really want to summarise now and just sort of say right now while we're working from home, consider the right place to work for the tasks that you do. So if you have an opportunity to step away from your workstation, it's a really good time to do so. When you're at your workstation, set up the best you can and use things around your home to try and support those basic positions we've talked about. Your bodies do an amazing job if you keep them healthy. 
movement can really make a difference. I really can't emphasize this enough. And just remember, the worse the position is, the more you move and you'll probably do really well. But also don't struggle in silence. Raise any concerns you have as soon as possible. Um, and that way we can get some resolution. And really, that's all I've got to sort of say on my slides today. So um, I think probably I'll hand over to Debbie and ask her, do we have any questions? Uh, we do indeed, Catherine, quite a few have come through. So um, I'll try and get through these and, and hopefully we can answer as many as we can. Um, some quite specific ones in relation to musculoskeletal issues, which obviously you've highlighted. Uh, the first one, um, we have someone who's experiencing hip pain, working from home, sitting down, getting up, noticed it getting more painful. Um, but it's not too much of an issue at the moment, but they don't want it to get any worse. Is there anything you can advise? Well, I think probably the first thing to say, it's really important with hips is to try and make sure the hips are higher than your knees when you're when you're sitting. I think you'd agree with me, Debs, that having an open hip angle is, is often hips respond better to that. Make Definitely. sure that you're not sitting with your your knees higher than your hips. So you're sitting in that awful suit position. Yeah, I would also suggest that frequent movement is the way to go um, and some some, you know, general exercises. OK, um, have another question for you. Um, someone who's having um, upper limb pain from shoulders right the way down to wrists and hands due to over typing, even with an ergonomic keyboard and standing desk, hands are still getting quite swollen from typing. Is there any way we can manage this? Is it because of a particular position that this particular individual is working in? I think that sounds quite serious to me. Um, oh, we yeah, can, I, um, I think probably we need to see the, the working position. Um, posture, mm. like other people, can arrange for sort of um, distance uh, assessments, um, but probably also needs to, the person probably ought to actually speak to their GP as well, um, mm -hmm. just to make sure that doesn't get out of hand. But certainly to begin with, lots and lots of breaks. Um, yeah. but maybe contact somebody to send, send us some photos and then we could have a look at the position. Yeah, that sounds like excellent advice. Um, slightly different angle, this one. What changes to the employer's, uh, sorry, what changes to the employer's obligation to supply workstations are there at the moment? Um, the, the HSE has said that in the temporary situation, there's no, no need to do a workstation um, assessment. Um, however, you know, employers still have a duty of care. And so if people can't get a fairly good setup, um, employers need to work with them to, to, to get that right. Um, so if somebody is struggling, they should contact their employer because we still have a duty of care, even if we don't have to do a checklist. Yeah, OK, that makes sense. Um, and I think you've, you've touched on this. And I think with the situation being the way it is, we can completely understand why people are finding um, that they're quite emotional at this time and finding it difficult to, um, to maybe motivate themselves to struggle. Um, very emotional. Is there, is there any advice that we can offer in addition to what you've already mentioned? Well, I suppose we're all in this. And I have to say, I've been um, fairly, feeling fairly emotional, um, shed a few tears, um, particularly remotely looking after, after my parents. Um, I find speaking to other people colleagues and others very very helpful um, mm -hmm. I think as far as the distraction is concerned um, make sure you have a, a plan to a day and, and stick to it and take lots of small breaks but plan them in so you know you're being effective so you you you, you know that you're achieving um, but yes I think talking to people is so important using Absolutely. the video conferencing with you know so you can see people as well yeah. Yes, agreed, agreed. Um, and a, a, a similar one, um, this particular individual has got a, a young daughter um, struggling to find time to um, give her the attention that she needs, despite the fact she wants lots of hugs and kisses, which I think is lovely. Um, but I think I think that the advice that you've already given, probably to reiterate that again, um, this particular lady is struggling to, to sleep in the evenings, finding that she's exhausted. But again, I think from what you've said, just making sure we're trying to schedule some time that she can spend with um, with her young daughter and then spending some quality time for herself. Um, I, 
I think that's important. I think, you know, also speaking to the manager and saying, look, these are the times I'm going to need to be with my 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 daughter and yeah. make sure that the daughter's aware that this is her valuable time as well. But also yes. let's not forget, you know, the sleep hygiene. You know, if people are fa- struggling to sleep, you know, making sure the bedroom is cool, making sure it's a dark space, taking portable equipment out, you know, phones and things out of yeah. the bedroom, mm-hmm. you know, um, make sure there's plenty of exercise during the day and maybe with her daughter she can do some exercises as well um you know so so think about all those little things to help sleep as well but also yes it is about the planning I think at the moment yeah okay um interesting one um would a te- would temporarily sitting on an exercise ball help with hip or back issues um I know we both have our um have our own uh, thoughts on exercise balls. But um, I I think from my point of view, I would probably say as a temporary exercise, yes, as a long-term thing, no, would you agree? Yes, I mean, exercise balls are great for exercise. They're not so good as chairs. Um, So if one uses them for sort of 10, 15 minutes, do some exercise, maybe when you're thinking or maybe talking on the phone, as long as you warn somebody on the other end that you might, you know, might be moving around and might sound a bit breathless. Um, (laughs) But when you're actually trying to input and work, the likelihood that the ball is going to be at the right height to get your hands at the right height is unlikely. And also because they're unstable, people tend to try and fix them with their legs and create tension. So use them for short periods of exercise throughout the day. But when you're working, it's probably best to try and get a static good chair set up as you can. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I've just got to, I'm, I'm running through a few because obviously everybody had the same issue with the audio. So apologies for that, folks. Um, I think that the final one, I think you've answered most of the questions um, in, in several of them were very similar in, in, in their way. Um, but one uh, from one of our listeners just wanted to thank Catherine for a really helpful presentation. Um, lots of people, I think, have found it really helpful, really enjoyed it. Um, and yes, it is going to be available as a recording, as Catherine said at the beginning. Um, and we're also sending out a link to anybody that signed up um, who will have access to the to the presentation. So for those people that missed the sound, um, it has been recorded and will be sent out. Yes, I think, I mean, I mean, I, I'm not sure. It's probably my end that the the, the sound went <laughs> out, so we, we can edit edit that out. Um, but but uh, thank you for your kind words. I mean, it, it is difficult in these times, um, but we are always here. Um, we we have a remote um, say assessment service, as we've said. But actually, Debbie and I quite frequently be um, answering questions. So if there's anything we can help you with, um, please reach out to us at Posture Right, and, and we will see what we can do to help. Um, also, if I can just remind you that the, the Charter Society of Physiotherapy website has some really good videos and, and exercises on it. And we've also produced quite a lot of um, advice sheets that are free to download off our own website, too. Um, and you should find that in the link that is sent to you. So please, you know, we're here to help. We're here to support as much as we can. Um, yeah. And we we enjoy doing it, don't we, Debs? Absolutely, 100%. Um, and, you know, as, as much as we can help at this time and at any point in the future, as Catherine said, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Brilliant. So uh, have we covered most things? We have. I think one final thing from a private physiotherapist, which is quite nice, that says, please, can I post a link to this webinar on social media? Be delighted. Um, and anything else we can do. Uh, yeah, yeah, happy. If, if this helps one person, then it's a good job job. So yes, please uh, push this as much as you like. Yeah, Uh, one final one. Um, Someone working in the bedroom, which is the only place they have to get space away from the family, um, a bit of quiet time. Any tips for working in your bedroom? I would not be tempted to work on your bed unless you're Uh you're reading something or or maybe you could lie on your bed doing some exercises whilst you're on the phone. But I would strongly suggest that you move the workstation away from the bedroom when you finished work. So there's a demarcation between you going to sleep and your work. And, And it sounds sad if you can't move it, put something over the top of it and hide it. Um, (laughs) <laughs> the mind and the psychology is a funny old thing, um, but try yeah. and make sure that when you go to bed, work is not looming large. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Fantastic. I think we've covered um, as many as we can, Catherine. I'm, I'm aware that you're on a clock as well. Yeah. Um, so I think from, from my perspective, just to say thank you um, and thank you to everybody for listening. And um, as we said before, any questions, any queries, anything we haven't gotten back to to you today, please don't hesitate to get in touch. OK, one very last thing, and this is the last thing. Um, I'm hosting a webinar a week on, a week tomorrow with uh, a lawyer friend of, of ours who has spoken to us before looking at the possible options and things to consider when looking at coming back into the office um, so if anyone's interested in that have a look on our website um, and we'll be advertising it there um, and I hope you enjoy this nice sunny day and the nice weekend coming up and I look forward to speaking to you all soon so thank you for joining us and goodbye thank you,